I finally got around to running some cuts on this milling machine. First, I ran some cutting tests on an aluminum block and later on a 123 steel block. There were some failures as well as successes. Let's start with the aluminum milling. The first test was done with a 1 quarter carbide roughing end mill that I purchased a few years back. This is a surfacing operation at 50 inches per minute, a cutting depth of 20 mils, and a spindle speed of about 7500 rpm. There is horrible squealing vibration. It did not matter whether this was run at 10 mil or 20 mil cutting depth. I sort of blame this on a dull cutter. It was clearly a reground and coated end mill, and so I looked at it with a microscope. But while this is not the sharpest end mill ever, it is not clearly really dull either. Still, I purchased a new set of end mills, and these were clearly much sharper. So I'm going to test those. There is no squealing, but the cutter loaded up in a hurry. This can usually be avoided with proper lubrication, so I improperly lubricated by painting the surface with oil, the way you might do on a lathe. I then ran tests at 15, 30 and 70 mil cutting depth, and I'm generally pleased with the outcome. It is interesting to note that the roughing end mill did not seem to need the lubrication to avoid loading. I guess it's the coating, but maybe it's the geometry of the cutter. What you see next is the 70 mil cutting depth. It threw the cutting chips very far, and I really do have chips and not dust, though the chips could probably be much bigger. Next, let's have a look at steel milling. I'm not sure what I did wrong on the first pass. Uh, maybe I set the depth incorrectly, or it was just that I accepted the default of uh, 36 inches per minute but the end mill shattered and then gouged a line across the block. On the second and third try, I did get a nice cut, with cutting depths of 5 and 10 mils respectively. 
But I did get the sparks that one often sees in hard milling. So again, I find myself considering the need for a lube or cooling system. I did build a Fogbuster clone years ago. Maybe I'll install it here. Clearly visible on the right is the first cut, which broke the end mill and then gouged along. On the left cut is uh, my second try. The surface roughness is comparable with the grinding marks, but I guess that the feed rate is probably lower than it should be. Let's talk about the spindle for a little bit. The spindle bogs down a little with load. It is far better than a regular universal motor because I converted this to a shunt motor which has a far better torque curve, but it still happens some. The 70mm deep cut had a material removal rate of about 0.7 cubic inches per minute. According to this table, that translates to a usage of about 0.2 horsepower. If I were to mill steel with the same cut, it would require about 0.7 horsepower. The Bosch website for this router advertises it as a 2 horsepower router, but it also advertises it as an 11 amp motor. 11 amps at 120 volts can at the maximum only be about 1.8 horsepower. I think this is a case similar to the shop vac type vacuum cleaners, where the ratings are pure fantasy numbers. From a practical point of view, there is probably quite a bit of headroom for aluminum, since I only cut at 7500 RPM, and I can get some decent sized chips if I double the RPM and double the feed rate. Uh, the chips should be the same size. But for steel, the RPM of the spindle has to be lower than for aluminum. At 3800 RPM, I have only got 0.3 horsepower left of even the fictional 2 horsepower rating. This is pretty nice, I think, for a first test. There is clearly some more room for testing the performance envelope. Uh, maybe for steel cutting I need to look into a spindle upgrade. 